We need to talk about this card. What is up, everybody? We are back with another video where I am discussing something going on in Yu-Gi-Oh! It's been a while since we've done one of these. I usually like doing them if there's something I'm actually interested in talking about. But recently, I mean, there's always something to talk about in Yu-Gi-Oh! But a lot of times I'm just like, this is the dumbest topic ever. So I don't talk about it today. This is it. I don't even know if I'm necessarily interested, but I have seen a lot of comments about this and the current new set Battles of Legend Terminal Revenge released this new card and I'm seeing lots and lots of discourse and by discourse, I don't mean like Twitter or anything. I just mean in my comment section. I think there is a little bit going on other places, but I haven't necessarily followed it. But the Dragon Master Magia is a new card in Battles of Legend Terminal Revenge. I did an opening yesterday. You can go check it out if you guys missed it. Uh, yeah, I know I pulled Phantom of You Bell and skipped past it. It's classic me not knowing the brand brand new card that's amazing it's it, yeah okay but i i wasn't paying attention okay cut me some slack this card the dragon master magia is a combination of the blue eyes ultimate dragon and the magician of black chaos these are two iconic monsters from the anime technically the card doesn't have to be those two combined but if you look at the artwork as you guys can see here it is the magician of black chaos on top of a blue eyes ultimate dragon technically the fusion reads blue eyes ultimate dragon or three blue eyes monsters plus one chaos or black cluster soldier ritual so it's a little bit more generic than that because if it was just those two, it would be completely unplayable, but it's, sl I mean, it's still not great, but it's at least more possible to summon. This video is sponsored by Whatnot. As you guys may have heard from me before, Whatnot is an awesome auction platform where I am constantly selling Yu-Gi-Oh cards, whether it be live, whether it be on my marketplace, etc. And I will be live on Whatnot this Thursday at 5 p.m. Central, opening the brand new set, Battles of Legend Terminal Revenge. And this new set has a brand new card called the Master of Dragon Magia or Magia, I'm not sure how to say it, but it's a combination of Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon and the Magician of Black Chaos, which is gonna be really, really awesome to hunt for. And it only comes in quarter century secret rare. So if you guys wanna be there live for when I'm opening packs, you guys can grab some packs yourself at the live auction. Also, I'll be giving away a bunch of stuff, including some boxes of Battles of Legend Terminal Revenge. So I wanna see you guys there this Friday at 5 p.m. Central. Make sure to bookmark my show. Go find Ruxin by clicking the link in the description, getting $15 free credit if you are a new user and then bookmarking the show so you don't forget. Thanks again to Whatnot for sponsoring this video. Now, the thing about this card is obviously very iconic, very anime, very awesome, um, but you know, now, blue eyes, not usually meta, not since like 2016 has it been really good. So what's the problem with the card? This card was only printed in quarter century secret rare. That is the highest rarity in Battles of Legend Terminal Revenge. So the only way you could obtain this card is by pulling a quarter century secret rare, which obviously pretty hard to do. You know, quarter century secret rares are one every four boxes on average, something like that. And then there's 25 different quarter centuries. So 25 times four boxes. That's a lot of boxes, 100 boxes to get the card you want. Very difficult. Obviously, you should just buy the single, right? That's another thing we'll get into because the current pre-sale price of this card is $549.94. So there's a lot to unpack with this card. Some comments are very upset that this thing's only in quarter century secret rare. Some are upset that it costs $549. What do I think about both of those things? Well, this isn't the first time a card has only been printed in quarter century secret rare. For the last several core sets, we've had the Magician of Bonds and Unity only printed in Quarter Century Secret Rare. Now, there is a difference here because that card was announced to be in the next, I think, four core sets, three or four. So there's three or four different versions of that card, all in Quarter Century Secret Rare, but there were, you know, you if you didn't pull in this set, you could maybe pull in the next set. But even then, if it's 100 boxes, you know, on average per set, you still have to pull it and one out of 100 in one of the four sets. So it's still pretty rare. The thing about that one is though, nobody cared that that was only quarter century because the card was terrible. That brings us to the Dragon Master Magia. Is this thing terrible? I read through the effect. I know, I looked through it. I looked at the effect. I'm like, let me double check that this card is not good before I say that it's not good. This card must be fusion summoned. So, you know, that, that's already a restriction there. When your opponent activates a card or effect, it has a quick effect. You can negate the activation if you do destroy that card. So it's a generic negate card or effect. Doesn't have to target. That's pretty strong. You could only use this effect of Dragon Master Magia. I thought it was going to say once per turn, but it says in response to each card type, monster spell or trap. So you can use it up to three times per turn. So if they use one monster, one spell, one trap, they're not going to do that, though. What they're going to do is they're going to use two monster effects or two spells to out it. The thing is, though, if they don't have to and they only have a spell and a monster, it can negate twice. And the cool part is a lot of the times when they have effects like this where it's like monster spell trap negates uh per turn you need to like discard like a monster to negate monster or discard a spell you know that's like the old style way of doing it that does not have this restriction so it has three negates 
it doesn't need to discard or anything like that. There's the only there's no cost. It basically just can negate as long as it is a monster. The first time spell, the first time trap, the first time. So that's pretty strong. If this face up card and its owner's control leaves the field because of an opponent's card, you can special summon one blue eyes monster or one chaos or black luster soldier ritual monster from your extra deck or graveyard. So once it goes away, if you are able to out it, you are able to bring back another card. So honestly, the effect for this card is pretty strong. It's not a bad card. The problem is you have to have a blue eyes ultimate dragon or three blue eyes monsters plus one chaos monster. So you have to have like four materials or blue eyes ultimate, which took three materials to make to actually get it onto the field. So is this card terrible, terrible? No, it's actually okay. Will it be good? No, it definitely will not be good in the meta. I guarantee somebody will put it in a deck and it'll be like a crazy card and you know, they'll, they'll win a couple of rounds in a tournament or something with it. But this card is not gonna be good. It's not gonna be a good card. It's not gonna be a meta card. It's never gonna be a requirement to win at a YCS or anything like that. So now that we know that, you know, it's not a great card. It, it would be kind of fun to throw in your blue eyes deck. This card being only QCR is not restricting anyone from having the best possible deck out the YCS. It's basically just blue eyes fans. So I personally think this is a really cool idea to have only QCR cards in sets. Though, I do think it needs to be cards like this. It needs to be collectible cards that include anime cards like Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, Black Luster Soldier, all that different stuff. Dark Magician, like the did with the Magician of Bonds and Unity. So I think they're picking the right ones to be exclusive QCRs. Because if they started putting like really high end, you know, like the meta card, like like Phantom of Ubel, look, I, yeah, I know, big card. Let's say Phantom of Ubel was only a QCR. That would have been a huge mistake. Or if they took like Pot of Prosperity when it first came out and put that as a QCR only, then people would have to shell out, you know, at, the, at this point, 550 times three, which would be 17 or 16 or 50 dollars to get a play set. I mean, it's, it's not the price. We're going to talk about that in a minute, but let's just say it's two, 300. I mean, you're spending $600 and $900 on a play set of cards that you need to be the most competitive out of YCS. That should never happen. I don't ever support having the best cards uh, at a high rarity only and making so players basically can't afford them and it's too impossible for them to get the cards they need. But when it comes to cards like the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon or things that are not necessarily great cards but are very collectible and uh, they're trying to, they are trying to provide a little bit of artificial value in here by making it rarer, which personally I think that's really cool. So I do love that they're doing this in QCR. The problem is I know and many other collectors know that even though they're doing this right now, like they're giving us this cool collect thing, it's not going to last. Konami has proven that no matter what, they're going to reprint every possible card. They've already reprinted the Utopia Astro card, which was a very unique rarity in and of itself. It only came in the Astro rarity. It was like, wow, what an exclusive card. Really cool. Not that it was expensive anyway, because it was already going down, but they gave it a reprint in like ultra rare in Battles of Legend Chapter One. Then things like Starlights were really cool. Like those had a lower version, but the Starlight rare was just so cool, so collectible, like a really awesome collector's item because it was crazy priced. It held up really well in terms of like the secondary market and stuff. But guess what? Those all got QCR not necessarily reprints, but other prints in the same artwork, very similar rarity, and the Starlights just absolutely crashed. We've seen with Rarity Collection 2, they'll take any card and they'll reprint it seven times. I love Rarity Collection 2, but when it comes to collecting cards from core sets and exclusive cards that are only QCR, those are gonna get hit in a Rarity Collection or something at some point. So this begs the question, what is the point of doing a QCR only card? Is it just a cash grab? Is it just, this card only comes in QCR, you should go for it, you know, you should open a bunch of boxes to get it. Don't worry, it's exclusive QCR except it's gonna get a reprint in a year. So if I'm someone that's looking to collect the card, look, I personally, I am gonna go for the card and I am gonna grade it and it's gonna be in my collection, but that's I'm a unique case. I open a lot of, get it, cases. I open a lot of cases of cards because it's for content, it's for fun. It's a, it's a weird mix for me because it's my job that I open these cards. I get to enjoy them. I get to collect them at a, it's a lesser cost for me because, you know, it's all part of the business. And if I end up pulling this card for, that's worth 150, 200, whatever, I can keep that card. It's a little bit different when it's a person uh, that's just, this is their hobby. And that person's not going to spend, you know, five, $10,000 on cases to pull a 200, 300, $400 card usually. So if I'm that person, I'm thinking, is this worth searching for if it's going to be a couple hundred dollars in the end anyway, and then it's going to get a reprint, it's going to be 20, 30, 40, whatever it's going to be after that. So I don't really understand why this is only QCR if it's later going to be reprinted anyway, because this is not a playable card. It seems like maybe it's just like, oh, this card's worth a lot of money 
right now, like that's this box now should be bought, but really we know it's going to get a reprint. So with that being said, let's move on to the current price of the card. $549.94 is what TCG player is showing me right now, currently in pre-sale. So if you guys have not heard my, sp my spiel about pre-sale cards, what that means is TCG player can do pre-sales like uh, whenever they want, basically. I don't know if there's a time limit, but they don't actually start selling from regular sellers like me. Like I'm just a regular seller. Pre-sale is like people that are like pre-approved and they probably have to be like a card store and all this different stuff. Regular people like you and me can start selling on TCG player for the new sets on the Friday of release. So uh, that's going to be what day is it right now? That's going to be the 21st of June. On the 21st of June, everybody can sell their Dragon Master Magia whenever they want. Right now, only a pre-approved stores are selling it right now. And that means very, very few people have access to selling the Dragon Master Magia right now. So that means they can just list it at 594 or 549. And as long as nobody undercuts them like another store, which they have a, an interest together to not do that because if they keep it higher somebody might buy the pre-sale if they undercut the other person might undercut them it just gets lower and everybody loses money when it comes to the shops but what happens when we get to list we're like we don't care about you know holding a line of a price we'll sell it for 500 instead of 549 you know the next guy's like i'll sell it for 450 i'll sell it for 400 boom 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 and we get to a point where they either sell or they get to a point where people are not like okay i'm not selling it for 50 75 whatever it is there's a number that it stops at and kind of stabilizes what the current price is and the demand for the card will make that price so at some point like if somebody's like i'm willing to pay 100 and then a few people are willing to pay 100 as soon as those people run out it keeps going down somebody might be able to, willing to pay 75 etc and that's what's going to happen with this card people are freaking out in the comments i'm not willing to pay 500 i just want to try the card in my deck it's just i hate that it's qcr only because i can't pay 500 this card will not be 500 so as you can see on tcg player 550 i brought up the all the quarter century this is quarter centuries ever in Yu Gi Oh listed from high to low the highest quarter century right now is a dragon master maze you had pre-sale not going to be the highest sp little knight number two very playable very very playable in a very expensive set this card's worth 100 on both the boxes 150 dollars for for Oju age of overlord boxes this is the anomaly of qcrs very playable very hard to get the set this is a 400 dollars card so that is the top end of what a qcr can be this card will not touch sp little knight's price next battles of legend monsters revenge bestial lubelion speaking of qcrs only this card was also a qcr only so this is might be something we can look at 194 dollars 48 though bestial lubelion more playable than dragon master mazia next up old I don't know what this is. Is this in the, the briefcase? I think this is in the briefcase. So the briefcase was very limited run. You had to pay hundreds of dollars to get the briefcase. That's why this is so expensive. Doesn't count. Then Sky Striker Mobilize, Mobilize, Stop, Sky Striker Mobilize Engage. This card also playable, $190. I think you use multiple in a deck. You're not going to use that. In, well, maybe I guess you would in Mazia Defense. I don't know what you're doing, but that's an extra deck. This is more playable. Ash Blossom, best card in the rarity collection. Iconic card, really playable hand trap. Obviously, it's going to be up there. Best card from Phantom Nightmare, 170 I mean, this, this is where you can see the best cards in sets, Nightmare Throne, they hang around $170 to $200 at QCR. That is the top end. It doesn't count for SP Little Knight. That is an anomaly. Here's um, Ubel Loving Defense. I don't know why that is so much. I guess Ubel, fan, the, the Ubel deck's getting popular because of the fandom of Ubel, et cetera. Superstar Slayer, that, that's expensive too. So if I had to speculate on what this thing's gonna be, Dragon Master is not in the realm of these cards when it comes to playability, even though it is its exclusive QCR. So you could say that bumps it up a little bit. I'm expecting this card, honestly, to be $100. In QCR, maybe even less. If it ended up at 150 or something like that, I wouldn't be shocked, but that would include probably some people buying it out like stores believing that it could hold up like they like what happened with 10,000 dragon i do not think that this card is going to hold even close i think it's going to be down here like i mean wanted seeker of the sinful spoils market price 135 right now i mean that card's way more playable lights run dragon link 108 that card's got some playability i mean honestly i if i had to guess we'll see how how right i am in a few weeks i think this thing's gonna be 75 bucks so if you want to play the card it will only cost you 75 bucks, which is still a lot more than if it was a secret and it was like 50 cents, but it is not going to be $550. It's not even going to be close to that. So this card's been an interesting moment, I guess, that it seems like people have latched onto, even though it seems like, I mean, Bissler Lubelion, the uh, the Magician of Bonds and Unity, and we've seen it before, but for some reason, now people are caring about it. I don't know if it's because Blue Eyes, people like Blue Eyes, but 
I think it's cool that they gave us something to collect, which is awesome. The problem is we know what's coming in the future and that kind of negates the fact that they gave us something to collect because it's going to get reprinted. And that just feels bad when you, you know, spend a bunch of money to pull it, you buy it at very expensive price, whatever it ends up being, and then it gets reprinted and your card's worth nothing. So it's kind of a bummer when that happens. It's also not going to be this expensive, guys. It's not going to be this expensive. Pre-sale prices, it's something that happens every single time. We freak out about pre-sale prices and then they're way cheaper. So keep that in mind. If you guys enjoyed this type of video, just talking about current stuff in Yu-Gi-Oh, make sure you let me know. We will be doing a versus video tomorrow of Battles of Legend Terminal Revenge versus Rarity Collection 2. So if you guys are interested in that, that should be pretty fun. And Saturday, we'll be going live, opening a ton of Terminal Revenge, searching for the Dragon Master Magia. Uh, and we'll probably know the real prices by then because it'll be Saturday. And make sure you check out my live stream on Whatnot tonight at 5 p.m. Central. We'll be opening this brand new set, hopefully pulling this Dragon Knight thing. Even if we don't pull it, we do have Saturday's stream on YouTube. So make sure you go check both of those out. It's going to be super fun. Hope to see you guys there and hope you guys enjoyed the video. Shout out to Tone Fo Show, Puffin Zudum, Ernesto Dan, America Deutscher, KK Beats, Another Side Show, Ian Moose, Junior Barning, Robert F., Thomas McLean, Chang Lang, and Aldelso Galicia Jr. Thank you guys for supporting the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.